Hello everyone, it's System Left, and this is Guy Factory 4. Hope you're all well having a busy day. I myself, well, I'm having a pretty good one. So let's kind of hammer this out, get her done, push forward, and uh, see what I did here. Uh, in between episodes, I did a little bit of stuff here. I did massively upgrade um, this kind of setup here for the cobblestone. So trying to fill the black hole unit. You'll see here, it's actually getting items really quick. So about uh, 100,000 in a little over a second, which is uh, not too bad at all. <laughs> so it's pretty awesome. And uh, it is working really well. I'm doing that with the integrated tunnels, uh, importers, and the interface. So the interface, you don't need to set anything. Uh, the actual importers, you just need to make these variable cards, throw them inside, and then, yeah, just bam. Get the little check mark, uh, import all items, and it just pulls them in there super fast. Uh, so I did ask in the last video to kind of get some tips on this. Uh, a couple of you suggested this, and it's uh, pretty awesome, I have to say. It works out really well. Uh, the reason it actually goes so much faster than the cyclic ones is the cyclic ones, if you connect to one pipe, you know what I mean, the one side, and then connect to multiple different kind of tanks, it can still, the main pipe that's actually connected to the side of black hole unit can really only pull one channel. Where these ones, this can pull from everything all at once. So this one line, this can handle it all. So pretty awesome, works really well, and it's not going to take too long to kind of finish up that uh, advancement there. So that's pretty cool. I worked on a couple other little things, I guess. So over here, actually, the cookie one, it's actually running real well, too. I think I'm about halfway done. So halfway done there. That's pretty awesome. Why do those trees look like they're growing, like, insanely fast right now? Like, abnormally. <laughs> That's weird. Uh, this one, too, when you look at it, it actually goes super laggy. If I actually just let it rotate. Look at it. It's like a slideshow. It's just too much going on in there. That's why I put them in those machines. Also, back here, I automated... Um, obsidian really quick so this lava coming back in here uh drawer this was 64 stacks i got a uh, export bus doing sticks did a storage bus so just kind of hit it back here got that done and then i guess downstairs i did one or two other little tiny things i think uh i think i just storage bus stuff so i storage bus that just for the sake of doing it so if i need a fish or something i can grab it realistically it doesn't matter that much and then I stored bus this as well. I just ran around and made sure everything had a storage bus on it pretty much. Uh, so I could pull things. Like right here, I know we're going to need snowballs today. So I just storage bus that. Then if I pull them out, it'll just keep making snowballs. And really, when am I going to need more than nine stacks of snowballs realistically? So pretty cool. Pretty awesome. I did get that done. What we're going to work on today is actually, well, what we're working towards, right? I talked about doing the reactor today. And I realized I can't do it today. <laughs> There's not a chance. So this thing's massive. It's way bigger than I realized. So in here, it says it's like a 24 by 24 by 24. That's actually not accurate at all. Uh, it's more like a 53 by 53 like rectangle. They get to build a reactor. Then you have to power a whole bunch of stuff. Then you have to fill it with tons and tons and tons of fluid. And uh, I'm not going to be able to keep up with it because if you don't have enough fluid, you'll never get up to that power because it has a heating mechanism as well. So it has to get up to the proper temperature to actually produce the power. It's just a whole lot of work. Uh, it, I test in like two hours in creative. It, it's this ton. Um, what we're going to have to do is get a whole giant kind of battery ready to go. Because I believe it took over a billion RF just to turn the reactor on. So first thing we're going to work on is new cabling. So we're going to work on these cryo-stabilized uh, flux ducts. Which are a little bit of work. They're not too bad. But I do want to get them automated. And uh, we got a lot of stuff to kind of go through here. Just so we can then make a proper, proper power storage. So we can turn off that reactor really easily and real feasibly and power the whole thing at the same time. Like I said, you have to power the whole like ring and thing. It's insanity. I, I'm actually pretty pumped to do reactors. It's going to be pretty fun. But uh, you can see here I got a whole lot of stuff. We're going to get going. I'm going to start automating stuff. And, uh, we're going to get this done. Let's go ahead and get right into these uh, cryo-stabilized flux ducts. So we got a lot to do here. So you can see here there are like multiple steps. Uh, three different liquids we have to work with. So that's the thing. And uh, yeah, just a bunch of steps here. So... We're going to try to get it done reasonably quickly. <laughs> hey, wait, let's do that. We need to make these uh, first ducts here. Let's go ahead and grab them. What are these ones called? They are called redstone energy flux ducts, uh, but they're empty. So we'll do that. We do need to fill them up with stuff here. So let's go ahead and grab that. Then we're going to grab them, run them over to a combiner. So we do that, grab that, and grab two. Sweet. And boom, we already have one filled. These ones can actually move, what, 9,000 RF? So they're actually much better cables than the ones we've been using. But uh, we're going to go ahead and take them immediately and set the crafting recipe. So one of them equals, uh, I guess I add two of those, equals one of these, right? 
So that's cool. That's gonna be done in the combiner. The combiner is a little weird to automate just because it has like the two sides. One comes in the red channel, one comes through the, through the blue. So we can't really automate it here just because uh, how our space is, it won't look tidy. So I'm probably gonna move that uh, downstairs. So that's a thing. So let's do that real quick, actually. Uh, I'll go down here. And where do I wanna set this up? I know I have cable over here, right? So let's just do it over here somewhere. Here we go. Come down here. Yeah, we'll just run off this. So I'm just gonna bring the cable over this way a little bit. Then we're gonna grab ourselves a MB interface. Let's do it right there. That's cool. Want to aim that thing like we always do. So let's do that. And then we're gonna run that into a chest. So we'll be able to kind of pipe it in the chest and pipe it to the machine to the different sides, just a little more cleanly. And I don't have to look at it down here, basically. Let's set the output to the top. Input left for the, that'll be for the cable. And then the purple will be for the redstone. So we'll just do that and turn off the other channels because we don't need it. That looks good. Let's grab ourselves a import boss. That looks good. We'll import through the top and then just a couple more cables and we're good to go. There we go. That looks good there. So we have that kind of set up there. Let's go ahead and grab two item extraction cables. We're just going to use a simple whitelist to kind of organize this. So that causes so much particles. <laughs> I'm glad I put it out here where I can't see it all the time. With that and that, there we go. And this one, we'll just want to set a whitelist, I guess, on this cable. So we just go in here, whitelist. We'll put on max speed because why not? I didn't remember the graph acceleration cards. I should have done that. I'll come back later. Uh, this one will be for this cable here. So just do that. And then this one should be, uh, just turn the speed up there for the redstone, right? So that there. So in theory, if I pump this in here, bam, done. That works. <laughs> that works there. That'll handle that. That'll automate that cable. And then we just need to get that recipe, I guess, into, oh, right here. I was going to put the recipe upstairs where it doesn't belong. It actually belongs right there. Anyway, that handles that recipe there. So that one's taken care of. And then we're gonna do two more little metals here that are kind of like stepping stone crafting materials we need to make. So let's go do that next. Oh, we also need a bunch of the silver amber. Let's grab that. There we go. Awesome. I'm gonna do the silver amber. We need this to actually make platinum. So to make the platinum was uh, right over here. It has to be done in the infusing with the diamond. So grab two of those, drop that in there. Bam, I'll probably just batch grab this, you know what I mean? So, I mean, we just got six stacks. That'll fill up in like a minute or so, so not a big deal. If I need more, I'll go grab it. But uh, we have to do that, right? Then we have to grab the platinum. Wasn't sure where to get the platinum at first. It wasn't until I actually looked at the dust that I found it. Thought we were gonna have to use the industrial uh, for going machine to grab that. But that's gonna give us this uh, Shibuyachi with the copper and the silver. And this one's gonna give us the lead platinum alloy one is going to be for used for the Signalium. Another one is going to be used for the Enderium. So we have to mix those with liquids as well, but we'll deal with that in a second. Go ahead and grab four of them. So that'll be that recipe. Then the Platinum. No, this is for the uh, Lead Platinum, right? Yeah, right there. Oops, grab the wrong stuff. <laughs> I should test those uh, ducks too, right? Let's go here. Let's make sure they're actually crafting. There we go. Let's see if they're coming in. Definitely going to need uh, speed upgrades on the Extract. Yeah, that's fine though. It's working. It's not a fast machine. It's already sped up though. I mean, I can't speed up that machine anymore. I mean, let's drop you off, you off. And then I guess we just need to set the recipes here. So three copper plus a silver equals uh, I don't even know how to pronounce that. What is that? Shibuachi. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> I know it's a real metal, so that's the thing. I just don't know how to pronounce it. And I'm not gonna Google, because Google's hard. Anyway, let's do that. That equals four. That handles that there. And that's going to go into the alloy furnace, which is going to eat up our last two slots here. So if we have to do any more alloys, uh, we're going to have to grab another one of these and get it automated. Anyway, that's good there. We'll probably drop all of them off. Let's make sure those new alloys are working. So let's go ahead and make like um, maybe like 10 of that. Awesome. And the other one was the lead platinum, right? So we'll grab 10 of them as well. Oh, missing pulverized. Did I not do the recipe on the pulverized? Oh, I didn't. <laughs> Let's do the uh, the platinum, right? Pulverized platinum, right? That. I thought I did the recipe on this. Am I crazy? Pulverized platinum is done in the infusing. No, I didn't do it. Let's go ahead and grab the uh, amber, right? So the amber right there. Awesome. Should only take a second to do this one, actually. So that plus that equals this. So that I handled that. 
I guess we just need that recipe right there. And this is why you test your recipes, because you go back later and go, what did I do wrong? And you don't remember why, the way you even did it. But anyway, let's go back to, uh, I guess, platinum now. Let's make sure that one's working. Let's make 10. I, I'm sure that's working great. Yeah, that's working no problem. And then it was the uh, the platinum stuff, the lead platinum. So we'll try 10, sweet. And it's working, I think. Yeah, done. So that handles that. That is the first couple steps. And now we just need to move on to the next ones. So I went ahead and grabbed a whole lot more stuff here. So I have a whole lot of things, a whole lot of upgrades, some of those alloys we just made and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and set up the automation for the signalium and the endearium. So we're gonna get that going here. Uh, I did forget to throw power in here, but uh, I have since remedied that because <laughs> I want to make a bunch of these cables and wouldn't. So basically what we need to do here is melt down uh, redstone and um, ender pearl. Uh, that'll turn the resin to ender. This will turn into stabilized redstone. We didn't run that through the infuser with these metals and we'll get our alloys. So we're gonna have like a fluid infuser right here. No, that won't be there. <laughs> that won't be there at all. Can I get that back? Oh, dang, damn it. I can't uh, do it that way. Let's go ahead and uh, break you and hope you don't fall in the void. I wanted to use a wrench because it's usually cleaner. There we go. Anyway, it will go melter first, then infuser. Then we'll have a space here. Then we'll have a melter. Then probably another infuser. Probably the best way to do it. So let's grab another cable here. There we go. Put it down here. I'm doing it down here with these ones too because the melters actually cast off a ridiculous amount of particles. So you'll see that in a second here. I was going to use these earlier in the pack for our uh, amber doubling. But uh, yeah, the particles were just too much. <laughs> Definitely too much. Anyway, let's grab them. Let's throw some uh, acceleration cards in that. Then we're going to want uh, exporters on top of the... Uh, melters, right? So we'll just do exporter, exporter. Oops, that's not right. Then importer, importer. That'll work. Then we'll pop them out. There we go. I lost that one to the void. <laughs> Hashtag feed the void. There we go. And we just accelerate everything here. So we'll just get that done and get that one done. So what we're going to do here is this automatically buffer these liquid ones. So I'm going to tell this one to export probably redstone. So we'll do that. And that's going to start casting off a ton of particles, but it's also gonna buffer that liquid. Then we're going to go ahead and grab enterprise, do the same thing over here, right? Uh, there we go. So that one's going, so that's good. Then we need to move the liquids from one machine to the next. So we'll just do that and that, there we go. I think each one of these buffer 16 buckets, so that'll work out as well. So not too bad. So we'll just always have a buffer this here is basically the way it'll work. And then we'll have to set the recipes here, which aren't too bad, we'll kind of come behind this. And you can see quickly why I didn't want this upstairs <laughs> with this uh, giant mess of particles flying everywhere. And we'll bring it over here, over here. Then we'll set the recipes in those. Uh, I'll probably just aim those like I always do. And that looks pretty good there, actually. That's not too bad. So I think we have everything, right? Is that, is that really good? <laughs> I think so. So this one here is going to take the lead platinum, right? So we'll drop that off, get an enderium. And then this one, we'll get a shibayachi. And then there's our signalium. It actually got pulled in by the system. So it's actually working. And uh, we just need to set the recipes. So let's actually set the recipes so we could actually test these puppies, see how they're working. And wait, let's go to the signalium. There we go. We'll need that. And we'll set those down here. Clear that out, and that'll be lead equals this. So we don't have to deal with the liquids at all, which was kind of my plan here. Dealing with liquids is never fun. We still have to do the one more liquid there. Then we're pretty much done this, actually. So let's uh, head back down there. Get you do. Actually, we might be able to get them in there. Uh, they'll probably have ones listed in here now as the infuser, so I don't have to go all the way down there. Factory, fluid infusers. Oh, problem is I don't know which one's which. <laughs> let's just go back down. Probably the easier way to do it. I mean, I could name those, but I just, I can never be bothered, you know what I mean? I just feel like the time spent doing it uh, <laughs> isn't, isn't worth it. Anyway, let's go ahead and set the Enderium in this one, and then the Signalium in this one. And I looked at those liquids. They're not gonna be used for anything else that I could see, so not really uh, a big deal doing it this way either. So let's go check this out. Signalium, try out 10 of that. Awesome. And then the Enderium, right? 
Sweet. And uh, how are we doing? That one's done. And it's already moving on that one. And we're done. So that's awesome. So yeah, we can clear off the board here. <laughs> there we go. That's done. So last part of this is going to be a little more work. So right now, we can make these, right? So we can do that one and this one. So I'm going to have to teach this system uh, two more recipes, right? So we're going to clear that out. Uh, we'll do it on regular. So we need to teach it nuggets for this one. It looked like nuggets for this one as well. So we'll clear that out. Then we'll go ahead and throw that in the system. So we'll have you here and you here. So it knows how to make nuggets as well. So that's cool. And to actually make the ducks though. So the first one is that. I guess I could have done it with the agates too. I guess it doesn't matter. Maybe I'll teach it this one instead. Yeah, we'll teach it that one instead. That makes more sense. <laughs> actually, actually, it'd be a little more clean to do it the other one though. Although the other one's probably a little faster. Let's do it this way. This is actually cleaner. Let's grab you. Then we'll need one. Oh, I'll have to get that one to the system first, right? Before we can actually set the recipe for the next one. So we'll pop that there. Go ahead and see if we can actually grab the resonant one now. There we go. We have that one. Now let's actually see if we can get those ducks. If so, we're on to the last step. So let's get to duck here. Sweet. Check out the resonance. These ones can move 25,000 RF. So we're getting up there, right? So we're getting there. We're almost there. It's almost the thing. <laughs> we're almost done. And uh, we already have one. So that's cool. So we have it done up to this point. The last part is going to be the cryothia dust and the gelid. And we have to fight some blizzards and make a data model. I may actually go do this myself right now. So I actually just need to grab like three of those. Then grab some blizz seeds. Maybe something like that. Because uh, we need to get a data model for this, right? So the data model will be... Which one is it right there? Yeah, you use any of the three kind of th options here. And you get the blizz powder from the blizz rods. Which you get from uh, killing the guys the, the blizzes so i'll go do that i'll be back i'm gonna get our data data model up to basic and then we'll kind of move forward i said i was only gonna do basic but uh yeah i totally forgot that i had this mob duplicator set up <laughs> so i just grabbed a uh mob imprisonment tool and i uh, got that done and i guess i don't need that seed either so effectively i use zero seeds because i just got my seed back so that's pretty awesome but anyway that's pretty cool there oh i put that down on by mistake let's uh pick you up <laughs> Here you go. And, uh, let's head back down here. We're going to go ahead and get this automated now. We're going to do it uh, with uh, deep mod learning. So we're going to get that done. We're also going to automate uh, probably three of them. Just get three of them done at the same time. And if we need any of those resources, uh, we always have it. So probably do it over here, I think. Then that'll be red. Okay, let's kind of do it right here. We're going to dig a little hole here so it can work. Let's do like a three by three. Or I guess a three by two. Probably more enough room. So let's do that. There we go. Do that. Ooh, maybe one more. There we go. And probably actually right here too. So let's get this out of here. Right, we need to run a line of cable. So we'll just bring it across here. Probably sit here, right? If I'm thinking about it right. And we'll get it set up here. These should be pretty easy to automate. Although I think they're sided. So I think the items like the polymer has to go through the top of them. And then you have to pull the items out of the bottom. So I think that's kind of how that works there. We'll kind of see. Grab some of these chests too. So I have two regulars and a trapped. That'll kind of help us out. Uh, down here we'll actually have the loot uh, fabricators I was thinking. So kind of like this here. Then we pull the items out of the bottom. And then how would I do this? I guess we'd have the uh, simulation chambers on the top. So something like this here. That, that, and that. That should work. Let's get our blocks back hopefully. There we go. There we go. And then we'd have the chest here as well, I suppose. So we'd have one right here. Then the trap would have to sit in the middle. Um, not like that. <laughs> it's going to be there. Just uh, actually has to be placed. Then we're going to grab our regular chest. I'm going to throw those ones too for no apparent reason. Get them lined up like right here and right here. We're then going to have a bunch of item translocators probably sitting like this. So kind of like that there. And then we'll be able to filter some of the items on those. They have like a built-in filter. Like if you hit the outer ring, you just uh, enter the filter there. I'll handle that part of it. Awesome. Then we're going to need to import items into these. So we use the export buses. So let's do that, that, and that. Each one of these is going to have a crafting card. Because it's going to have to 
keep themselves pretty much full of polymer. So I'll just do that, that, and that there. And how am I gonna power these actually? We do importers here, I guess, on the back of this. Yeah, we'll do, I guess I could do it that way. Didn't really think about power that much. Uh, let's see here. Uh, translocators, do I not have, uh, yeah, import buses, there we go. Oh, there they go, I lost them. Anyway, there we go, we got uh, three import buses on the back of those. Then I guess I could do these ones from the bottom. Let's try that way, that should work. So we'd have three more uh, import buses on the bottom of these ones. So like right here, that should work. And power would have to kind of loop around wonkily. Don't you fall? Why do I keep, what is doing that? I'm getting on my bar. Is it like, Is am I getting it like here? Like, how is that falling? I don't understand. It's like I'm dropping things here and they're flying out of the world. Like, I don't even get that. Anyway, let's uh, come over here. There we go. That there. That'll handle the power. So that isn't too bad. I believe I still have one more point on me. There we go. I can just sit there. And then realistically, I just need to wire this up. So let's go wire it up here. Let's grab, uh, we need another hole here because <laughs> we haven't uh, lost enough blocks here yet. Go across there for the importer. Yeah, sorry, importers. And there we go. And then we'll need uh, to bring a line right here as well. And then finally a line right here. So I mean, it, it's a lot of stuff going on in a little space here. But, uh, it's pretty basic. So yeah, we're gonna export the items automatically. They're probably already getting full, right? Yeah, there you go. They'll get all filled up, that's good. And then they'll need items in their simulation chamber. So we use the wither one on this one. Then we'll use the enderman on this one because I really don't have a good supply of enderpearl, so this is a good way for this. And I'm gonna throw this one here for the uh, blizz. I may come back and change the data models to something else later, but I, I figure we only need to really automate three of these, right? Uh, this here, so I'm gonna need this first matter. So whatever I'm running as a data model, I'm gonna need filtered on the matter over here. Then it should, like even if I turn this one on, right? If I go here and here, it should end up in there. Yeah, it did, cool. And then the pristine should end up down here. We'll see that in a second. Uh, I'll need to do this one as well. Uh, actually, we have both here. So let's grab you. And we'll just tell the matter to go here. And we'll just leave that open. Pop that in there. We can set the recipe right there, and then the item should get pulled, right? Yeah, it's gonna get pulled out. That's cool. May have to throw in some accelerations on the export, but that's fine. And this one as well, I guess. We just need the overworlding matter this time. And uh, we'll just set the filter. I figured this was a good little way to just have these things filter themselves, basically. That's what I'm trying to do here. Oh, there we go. And do that there. Yeah, they just filter themselves because I really only have to filter that one line. And the only thing that go in these is pristines, I think. So I don't think we have to worry about that. I also have a bunch of this stuff. So let's do that as well. So I think this is working. <laughs> is, is it fully working here? I have no idea. I guess I'll find out here pretty soon. Here we go. I'll have to tidy this up too, but that's not bad. So we've got ender pearls in there. I'm waiting to see one come out of this one though. Um, it, it just keeps feeling. Cause I have to set the recipe, you actually have to set what it's gonna do uh, in the little filter there, but you need a pristine burst. This one is just being annoying. This one's working fine though. So it's actually doing what it needs to as it produces. They'll just get pulled in the system. I'm not sure though, I, I'm not sure about this. Do they work with redstone signals? Can I grab a lever on them and uh, turn them off? Uh, a lever maybe? Cause if I ever just wanna turn one off, right? Cause uh, I don't really need uh, them to run forever. I just need to get a good backlog. Um, I just don't know if they turn off the signal. Probably, no in, uh, iteration. Oh no, they don't. Maybe there's a trick to that. Anyway, I could just pull out the data model too, but a lever would have been nice. Anyway, that works. I just want one to come in, man. <laughs> this one's being super cheap here. It's only 24% chance on this one, I guess. Um, they also, they gain levels every time they go through a cycle. I didn't notice this early in the pack. So in time, this one will get to self-aware. It just has to get there, right? So that's cool. And the items are coming out, right? Yep. Everything seems to be working. And, uh, this is actually fully automated now, which is awesome. And uh, we're getting a good amount of this uh, blizz rod. So that's cool. 
And okay, I went ahead and taught the system a few more recipes here. So I taught it the Cryothium Dust and the Bliss Powder. Then I taught it how to make the um, Flux Ducks, the empty one there. Then I went ahead and taught it the ME Fluid Storage Cell as well. So I have all those components. We're going to be using the ME system to actually store the Jelly Cryothium that we need to make. And we're going to be using this ME Autofiller here. It is a cool little block actually. If there's fluid stored into an ME system, it's from Extra Cells too. Uh, it can automatically bucket it for you and actually teaches the system the recipe. You don't even have to teach it. So it's really cool and really useful actually. So we do have that. And I think we pretty much have everything to go. Uh, so let's get going. Also, uh, I added two more drives here. I guess uh, not drives, terminals. I have the gas terminal and the fluid terminal. So we can actually see what's going on there. Uh, we'll be using the gas one at a later point. Just figured I'd get it made. So the first thing we want to do here is go ahead and throw in the fluid storage. So we'll do that. Then we'll probably want to go down to where the melters were, which is uh, probably right down here, maybe. There we go. Then we're going to want to run some more power. So we'll just do that and that. Then I guess we can go ahead and uh, get this melter hooked up to the system. Sweet. And then we're going to want the uh, export bus. Export bus, we're probably just going to export the Corothium dust. Actually, I'll get it wired up first. Let's do you, you there. Then we'll do a fluid import. Toss that on here. And that's awesome. So that fluid import is going to pull that liquid into that MB drive that we made uh, for the fluids. So that is cool. Go ahead and get that upgraded. Probably do this here. And make sure that that stuff's actually coming into the system. Why are you not coming in the system? Uh, what did I do wrong here? We've got a export bus here. Oh, craft guard. I'm such a dork. Anyway, that should be good there. There we go. So we got the Gryothean coming in. Actually, why did it stop? Okay, I was wondering. So it's, it's coming in now. It's doing what it's supposed to. Uh, we're going to go ahead and throw the acceleration cards in. So one there. And I guess we already have them on that side. Uh, this actually exports really slow, so you're really going to want the upgrades there. But uh, that liquid's getting pulled into the system automatically, which is exactly what we want. So let's actually head up here. Take a look at this terminal. See here, we already have 10 buckets, and that'll just keep storing it and keep crafting it pretty much until it fills that drive, and I'm okay with that. So that is pretty cool. Uh, the last thing we need to do, actually, is take this filler and throw it on a cable somewhere. Let's uh, throw it on this one. There we go. And now that I added that there, if I go to the crafting here and check Jellid, you can see it actually already knows how to make the buckets, and I didn't even teach it that. So we and uh, we can actually go ahead and uh, just teach it this recipe here, which is the final uh, ducks that we need to make. So let's go ahead and drop off the recipe. Go into here, go to duct, and uh, see if we can actually make these ones here. Yeah, 20 of these ones. Go you know, grab, I guess 30. Can we do 30? We can. Let's go ahead and make 30, <laughs> which is pretty awesome. Well, that's going there. And we're going to be uh, switching over our power system to a new battery. So we're going to get rid of the bulk of these. There we go. Probably need those points and plugs anyway. So I'll leave those last ones until we're switched over. We're going to want all the parts of our induction matrix. So let's grab that. Do like another 40 of them. Let's grab you. Go back to induction there. So the induction matrix is just a really like insanely powerful battery. It's probably the second best battery next to Draconic. So it is uh, pretty awesome. You can move around a lot of power too. So that's a nice bonus. So that's good there. We also need the ports, right? Let's do that. Let's go grab our ducks here. Now we have this. Oh, those are the wrong ones. Those are the empties. Ducks right there. There we go. Now that we have these, we move around uh, insane amounts of power. So they're pretty awesome. I don't need these anymore. Let's get rid of them. You can use those for making uh, more induction parts later on. Do not need you either. I'm putting down the wrong stuff. There we go. Let's go ahead and grab induction casing. Whole lot of it. So this is just a multi-block. It's a very simple one. We're going to do an odd little shape here because I want it to match up with the other side. But um, it isn't too picky about the shape. So you can see I'm going to do like a rectangular shape. Uh, we're just going to make it fairly tall just to make it fit in the space here the way I want it to. If I could stop putting down the casings in wrong spots. These blocks are always a little laggy when you place them too. Don't ask me why. It's a mechanism thing. It's a renderer. The renderer's always been... I guess it hasn't always been this way. 
on the last couple of times it's been pushed because um, no one's actually really actively working on this mod too much really just gets updated right and they fix bugs and stuff but no one's worked on it in a long time and uh, i think they are now though so that is pretty cool it'd be pretty awesome to see this when it finally gets you know totally updated and worked on again because it is such a good mod it is an amazing mod i love mechanism but the renderer man it's a lot of times uh impacts when they have their uh cabling um fully you know what's the word fully just in there it's just not disabled like it is in this pack uh they only left the uh gas piping in this one but uh when you use a lot of the piping things get really laggy because of the rendering in it anyway let's head down here awesome go ahead and hook these up these are the providers each provider can actually move uh 13 million rf so that is pretty cool and each one of these induction cells can still store uh 200 billion rf i think it is something ridiculous like that there yeah 204 grf which is billion rf so anyway we'll kind of close this off this will form the multi-block here there we go got our particles and uh that's good so let's go into here let's go actually grab a configurator just like that probably go up here shift and right click on that that'll set that one to output then we'll want a green input, I think. So we'll do green input right here, right? Power in. Then we'll end up wanting a blue output. So we'll probably do that right here. Awesome. Now that's not gonna make much sense right now, I don't think, until we set up um, our other plugs in the other dimension. So let's head over to Lost Cities and then we'll come back and break, uh, where is it? Those ones over there? Yeah, because they're gonna mess with things. I actually create a power loop until I get this fixed. But anyway, let's head over to Lost Cities. And uh, yeah, just get these switched over to the uh, new Flux Ducks. Uh, these uh, cryo-stabilized ones are just utterly insane. And I'm pretty pumped for them. Because our, our, our power system's been actually pretty lacking <laughs> for most of the pack. But uh, we're going to deal with that now. I also switched over to these at one point. I don't think I actually showed these. Uh, these are the energy cables from Cyclic. The only reason I was using these is because these here, these actual plugs, break uh, every time I restart the pack uh, when they're hooked to this reactor. So it's like a known issue. So yeah, I want to get rid of them and just connect with them um, with something else, right? So anyway, let's go ahead and actually grab some cryo stabilized, like there, and this here. That should work. Then we're going to grab two plugs. Doesn't really matter which ones. There's a plug. There's a plug. They need to both be on green now. So green here. What is this one? That's a plug on green. Sweet. Plug on green and turn off limit and turn off limit. So you can see there that the input is actually 118 million RF tick. So let's actually go back and look at the induction metrics really quick. But uh, we're pretty much done. So we have a giant insane battery now. Uh, we don't need this anymore. This is going to create a power loop. So let's get rid of you. Cool. And we don't need these anymore, actually. They'll create a power loop as well. So now that the way I have this set up, it's just a green to blue network, all running through this induction matrix. So we got 117 million, almost uh, 118 million, uh, million RF coming in here. And the power is going to go up. You can see here it can hold 3.68 trillion, which really won't take that long to fill, to be honest, with this kind of power production. That uh, matter overdrive reactor is utterly silly. It's just ridiculous how much power it produces. But uh, yeah, look at that, man. Look at that output. That's awesome. Down there, there's our input. That is cool. And uh, yeah, it's just working, man. It's doing its thing. So yeah, this thing is just storing massive power and in spreading our power where we need to on the two different channels. And uh, it's working like a charm. All it took was those insane cables. So we have those now. And when we set up our other reactor now, it's going to be much easier to set up because of this. So I really wanted to get into this. And uh, the next thing to be that we're going to need to do in the following episode is work on the fuel for that reactor. So I am going to end this one here, though. So as always, if you guys like this video, please hit that like button. I really liked it. Hit that subscribe button. It is always appreciated. We well, guys all have a good one. See you guys next video. Later.